Hey, what's up everybody? So I want to talk about EQ and compression today, especially when it comes to mixing beats. So I have the template open. Friendly reminder, you can download the template at my website for free. It's a producer template I have. And uh, I'm just going to import and drag a quick sound. Uh, let's see. Let's do like a soul sample somewhere. All right, so, so for this sample in purple, when it comes to EQ, let's say you had a sample. Um, in this situation, you could just throw it right on your channel. Okay. So this melody right now, the output of this channel is going to the bus, aux one through five. All right, so we're just gonna put this out to master for right now. And let's uh, just talk about some quick features of any EQ. This is gonna apply to any EQ you use and any door, not just Pro Tools. So the sample's very thin, there's no low end to it. It's got that telephone sound. And so what's happening there is a, uh, just putting on a high pass filter. That high pass filter would be in this EQ controlled here. You click it on. So basically what it's doing is just letting the high frequencies pass through and it's taking the low out. So that's what will happen here. Now in using your filter, you also want to make sure you pay attention to the slope of your filter. You can adjust that with the Q. The Q will adjust the slope. So you really want to get dramatic and cut this out. Otherwise, you notice how the low end comes in a little differently. Let's do the same thing with the uh, with the guitar that I imported as well. Let's turn it off. Let's mute the other one. Okay, so let's put this back on. Now you hear that telephone effect again. All right, let's adjust the slope. And then we'll do the same thing for the low pass. So this filter will only let the low frequencies pass through. I'm at around 500, I'm at 509.2 Hertz. All right, sounds like it's underwater. Let's adjust the Q. So the gray is what's being removed. All right. Now, cool thing about this filter, you can also use the bell curve. So what the bell curve is doing is just gonna pinpoint a specific frequency as opposed to just taking out a whole section. Um, when I use in the high pass filters, I only use the uh, the slopes. Let's say you're making a beat, right? 
and you want the sample to have that telephone sound for like a pre-hook or maybe there's a part in a bridge of the song you want to give an effect to then you can put both the high pass and low and then you can hear this If you want to automate some of your EQ in Pro Tools, you click these two squares and then you decide what you want to put on. And these are all the functions. Alright, so a low pass. And I'll just give a quick example. Now that you activated it, you go down to waveform, you go down to EQ, low pass enable. And then you'll be able to, this will be your on-off switch, in and out, okay? So it's automated, it just comes in. So that way you can use it in your production. I also want to point out the importance of uh, fishing for frequencies. Now, if you're working with good samples, they're probably going to have, they're pro you know, you're probably not going to have to do too much treatment. But there are situations where you just, maybe something's just really not hitting. You'll find you're going to do this a lot with vocals. And that's when you adjust your bell curves. and fish for those frequencies that don't sound right. So when I find a frequency I don't like, I'll drop it to negative three. I'll drop the gain to negative three, but I'll fish it up high. Um, it's best to do that when the volume is not too high so you're not hurting your ears. Um, in this EQ, there's also a feature where you can do the opposite. So instead of having to boost your EQ, you can actually just look for the EQs you don't like this way, subtractively. And that'll, that'll just be preference. So let me give you an example about fishing for EQ. So right there at 2.39, there's a sound, almost like a ringing sound. Ringing, whistling almost. So that type of frequency I won't want. I'll drop this to negative three. And if I take that off, it's a subtle change, but it comes through in the mix if you do that a couple times. Same thing for the low end. Uh, when you're working on your bass lines, your 808s, you're going to look for those sounds that are rumbling, humming, uh, that, partic that you may not particularly hear or, you know, it won't necessarily come through when you're making the beat, but at the end of it all, when you put everything together, you'll find it. It's always best to take it out. And if you have a sample that's very muddy, let's say you're working with some vinyl and things like that, um, I definitely suggest you use the slow because what you're doing here is when you put your high pass filters on your samples, you're opening up space in your low end, taking it out of your sample so you can leave that space for your drums and leave that space for your 808, your bass lines and things like that. That'll create space. So they're not clashing and fighting for the space here. Let's see if there's an 808 that I can use. Right, let's use an 808 from Decap. Shout out to Decap. 
Always hooking up the community with some good sounds. And let's make sure the temple's right. So I can help edit this. Okay, so you have your sample. Okay, so let's change this melody output to master. Okay, so I want you to listen to what happens with this EQ. What I suggest to do is, when it comes to your sample, making your stuff look something like this. I'll usually roll off anywhere between two and 300, depending on the sample. Um, the better the sample, the less filtering. So definitely uh, key to your mixes is finding good sounds to begin with. And you'll notice on the 808 when I'm using the low pass, some of the, uh, the buzzing, some of that dirt, uh, some of that distortion that's coming, coming through uh, will be filtered off. So one 808 can sound 10 different ways if you just know how to use your EQ correctly. You're allowing that 808 to live, right? The 808 is on the bottom. So this is the home for the 808 here. And since you're cutting, cutting it out of the sample, there's plenty of room for it to work with and vice versa. You're cutting out the frequencies of your bass to keep more frequency space for your samples. On my template, you'll notice that I have an EQ on my master. This is the EQ that's gonna affect the entire beat. And I never touched this. I have a small bell boost, uh, plus two at 10K. I always scoop out here, minus two, around 25. And I also have this roll off at 38. So nothing under 38 will ever come through. And that will avoid having any mud um, from my base. I like my mixes to be clean. So this will be your startup EQ if you download the template. And then you can just adjust this to your liking. Let's uh, just imagine that the entire beat is done. Drums, kick, snare, everything is in there, right? I mean, I could just add something real quick.
melody's done, bass line's done, and it's time to just kind of tweak that master. So when I go to my C6, you'll see me do this in a lot of my other videos. So what I do is use, um, you know, I have my own preset. I called it the master startup. Um, I like where the, whole, the high end is here. Those frequencies will always be affected the same way. I found that consistently doing this is just always um, affects the mix the same way. That's pretty much what creates the sound at the end of, the, of this whole signal flow. Right, this is the last thing that's a couple last things that's gonna affect the beat overall. So this is a multi-band compressor. So instead of compressing an entire sound and affecting it in one way, you can just highlight and compress very detailed frequencies. That'll just provide a nice quality and more controlled sound. So you hear there's a little howling, so I'll just go ahead and minus this 3 dB. And it's just clean, you know, that little end. So that's EQing, all right? And then a quick uh, review on compression.